Hello and welcome to Polynomials 1.2 and Behavior of Polynomial Functions. Okay, so we're going to continue our, our introduction of polynomial functions. And I'm going to teach you about a whole bunch of polynomial functions that have different looking characteristics visually. And different looking characteristics because of the numbers that are used in them. And how we can kind of predict what's going to happen based on numbers that they use in the polynomial function. Okay, so I know that all sounds confusing, but eventually when you start seeing all the slides and start seeing all the things going to work, then you'll eventually kind of sort of get it. Okay, so let's begin. <clears throat> all right, so we're going to go over in the next five or maybe six slides what happens when we have different numbers that we classify as the degree. Okay, and you got to remember now, degree is known as the biggest power in your function. Okay, so in this first example, we have degree zero, and degree zero means we don't have any x's, and that's why if you look at our equations, none of them have an x, right? y equals five, y equals negative two, y equals zero. None of them have x's because the degree is zero, and because of that, we have basically a horizontal line. So horizontal line at y equals height five, horizontal line at height y equals negative 2, and horizontal line at height y equals 0. Okay, so that's what happens if you have a, a degree of 0. <clears throat> okay, so what if we have degree of 1? Well, we basically have a diagonal line. Yeah, and you guys have been graphing this in algebra 1 for, for, for a while, so this should look familiar. Okay, and the things that you want to understand about um, degree 1 type functions are that it's arrows, right? I don't know, I know you don't see any arrows, that's I'm gonna draw it right now. <clears throat> so if I had to draw arrows at the end of each of these lines, yeah, these arrows are heading in opposite directions. The left side arrow is, is heading downwards, the right side arrow is heading upwards. So these two arrows are heading in different directions or opposite directions, okay? And the leading coefficient of all of these functions that you see up top. <clears throat> okay, so if the leading coefficient is positive, then your right side arrow is going to head upwards. If your leading coefficient is negative, your right side arrow goes down. Yeah, and you're going to say, uh, yeah, that's kind of down, I guess. It's going diagonally down. Yeah, but it's going downward in direction on the right side of your graph. Okay, and if your leading coefficient is positive, then your right side arrow is going to go up. All right. So <clears throat> now you can start to see that um, different types of numbers and how they're used, yeah, as far as where they're placed within the function, will have will have an effect on the appearance of the graph and the characteristics that it does. Yeah. Okay. So let's move on. So you can start to see the pattern. So we're going to move on to degree two, which is known as a parabola, and we just studied a lot of these, right? They're called quadratics. And degree two is going to be classified as same direction. And the reason why it's same direction is because if I draw arrows at the end of all of these graphs, you're going to notice both arrows yeah, in the first two examples are headed in the same direction. They're both going up. And in my third graph here, both of my arrows are going down. Okay, so that's what that's that's what degree two has as a characteristic. That when I look at the arrows, if I were to draw arrows at the end of each of these graphs, right, they head in the same direction. Yeah, and if my LC is positive, the right side is going to go up, right? So LC positive, right side goes up. LC positive in the middle, right side of my graph goes up. Third graph, LC is negative. So look what my arrow does on the right side. It's going down. Okay, so hopefully you start seeing the pattern that you're saying to yourself, oh, I guess the LC, based on if it's positive or negative, will control the direction of my right side arrow. And if you start to see that from, the, from group B and group C's examples, then you're seeing patterns. If you don't see it yet, don't worry. I'll talk about it when I talk about the next couple slides. Okay, so let's move on to the next slide. Okay, so this one is degree three, and it's called a cubic function. Don't worry, I'm not gonna test you on what these things are called. Yeah, if you know them, that's good, because it might appear as a, a ACT or a SAT type question one day, yeah? So one thing you have to know about this is degree is three, 
and it causes your your graph yeah it causes the arrows of your graph to head in opposite directions so oh wow the previous slide they were heading in same direction the previous previous slide they were heading in opposite direction so i wonder who controls them i won't see the answer yet i'll see if you can figure it out but yeah, i wonder what controls whether we have the word opposite or same direction for my arrows okay so let's move on to the part that you kind of do start to see already because i kind of pointed it out on the last slide that if your lc is positive your right side arrow goes up if your lc is negative like in the middle graph your right side arrow goes down if your LC is positive, your right side arrow goes up. Okay, so pretty sure we figure out the pattern that the LC being positive or negative controls the direction of the right side arrow, whether it goes up or whether it goes down. Okay, but we still don't know who controls the opposite and same thing. Yeah, so maybe we'll see the pattern when I get to the next slide. Okay, so degree four. It's called a quartic function. Like I said, I'm not going to test you on what these things are called. Yeah, if you know them, that's good. Yeah, it might appear as a question on ACT or SAT because I know I saw it once before. Yeah, doesn't mean they're going to do it again, but I just, I know I saw it once before. Yeah, because the kids tell me about it. Actually, I, I didn't see it. I heard about it. I'm sorry. <clears throat> okay, so my arrows, based on what I see in the graphs, they're heading in the same direction. So let's see. Let's see if I can figure out the pattern. When it was degree one, it was opposite. When it was degree two, it was same. When it was degree three, it was opposite. When it was degree four, it's same. Hmm. So one is opposite, two is same, three is opposite, four is same. Do you guys see a pattern? I won't see it just yet. I'll, I'll, I'll give you guys one more slide to see if you can figure it out. Yeah. But I just, I just pretty much spoke out the the results that we were getting from the different degrees that were on the different slides okay one pattern you should definitely lock in on is lc positive your right side arrow is heading up lc negative your right side arrow is facing down lc positive your right side arrow is facing up so i'm pretty sure you got onto that pattern already okay so don't lose that pattern because that's kind of important yeah okay so <clears throat> let's go on to our next slide degree is five we call that a quintic function. Like I said, I'm not going to test you on what these things are called. Okay, so don't worry about that. So let's look at my arrows though. What are my arrows doing in a degree 5 function? And from what I just drew, I can conclude that they're heading in opposite directions. So let's go over this again. Degree 1, opposite direction. Degree 2, same direction. Degree 3, opposite direction degree four same direction and degree five opposite direction so did you figure out the pattern i think you did yeah you can't really respond because this is a video i guess you could comment in the in the comments yeah but yeah if you if you figured it out you probably realize that if it's a odd degree it's going to go opposite direction so opposite odd yeah and if it's even degree, it's going to go same direction. Yeah, so odd, opposite, even, same. Okay, all right, so LC, we, we know that pattern, right? LC is positive, right side arrow faces up. LC positive, right side arrow faces up. LC negative, right side arrow faces down. So we got that already. I hope you guys got that pattern. Yeah, but if you didn't realize the pattern about the opposite and same, and I just told it to you right now, you might want to go back and look at some of the slides, right? And, and just confirm what I said is true, right? Degree 1, degree 3, degree 5, they all went opposite directions. Degree 2, degree 4, those are even numbers. They should have said same direction, okay? All right, next slide. Oh, I guess that was the last one of those patterns. Okay, so um, this kind of summarizes what I just told to you just now. Yeah, so I'm not going to really dwell on this slide too much. Yeah, I'm going to go on to the next one, though. And this one kind of shows you the, the pattern, like kind of like what I just showed you just now, right? So degree is odd, arrows opposite, right? Right side arrow faces up, so LC positive, okay? Arrows are going opposite direction, that must mean degree is odd. The right side arrow is facing down, so the LC is negative, okay? So they, they show a graph, both arrows are heading upwards, so that means degree is even, 
because the arrows are in the same direction. And the right side arrow is going up, so your LC is positive. Okay, so whether you're given the equation or whether you're given the graph, you should be able to go back and forth, yeah? Between one display of information versus the other display of information. So if they give you the graph, you can figure out characteristics about degree and LC based on even odd, positive LC, negative LC. If you're given the equation, you can start to say what the characteristics of the graph are gonna be based on the numbers that you have in your polynomial function. So try to be able to go two ways. Look at a graph, figure out what the numbers are gonna be. Yeah, given the equation or the function, give you give characteristics about what the graph is gonna be. Yeah, so go back and forth and be able to do that. All right, and this is kind of like what this slide does. Yeah, it tests your, your understanding, okay? Or, or it gives you a written version of what you should be understanding in your brain based on the information they give you. So this, is, this was pictures of arrows, so we can conclude that degree is odd, LC positive, and so on and so forth, okay? All right, so we have our homework, and normally, like I said, I don't do the homework problems for you, but I guess when we made the section, we forgot to give you classwork, so I'm just going to have to do part of your homework. I hope you're not mad about that. And if you are alarmed or disturbed that I'm doing part of your homework, then I can give you extra problems for practice. Yeah? Okay, so let's look at letter C. So this one is a situation where they're going to give us the polynomial function, and we're going to identify what the degree, what the LC, and the y-intercept are. Okay, so let's look for my biggest power, because these are all polynomial functions. We're not going to have to test whether it is or not. That was, that was the last section. So these are polynomial functions. So we're just, let's just figure out what the degree is. So let's look for our biggest power. So power of 5, power of 1, power of 3, power of 0, because there's no x. So that must mean his power was 0. <clears throat> okay, so what is my biggest um, power amongst all these terms? And if you say your biggest power is 5, then you just found your degree. So my degree is 5. <clears throat> I'm going to classify him as odd. And if my degree is 5, he's an odd number, that means the arrows go in opposite direction. Okay, so whenever you start to label um, <clears throat> what these numbers are, tell me what the number means for you as far as the appearance of the graph or the characteristic of the graph. Okay, and if you get into that habit, then it'll make the later on sections a lot easier. So don't just write degree is 5. Tell me what the 5 eventually does for you, <clears throat> that you realize 5 is odd, and it's going to be opposite directions for your arrows. Okay, so LC. So the reason why I circled the, the term that has the degree in it is because inside that circle, I also see my LC. So my LC is negative 1. So my LC is negative, so that means the right side of my graph is going to go down. Okay, so like I said, once you identify information about the degree, you tell me what it does to the graph. So degree was 5, that's an odd number, opposite arrows. Degree is negative 1, so that's a negative LC, so my right side arrow is down. Okay, and this is just something extra to find the y-intercept. Okay, but this is kind of easy because hopefully you remember what y-intercept has as a very special characteristic. That every single y-intercept in the entire world has an x value 0. So if I plug in a 0, these first three terms basically disappear, right? I put a 0 here, that becomes 0. I put a 0 there in the middle, that becomes 0. I put a 0 here, that becomes a, a 0. So it just pretty much it disappears. So because I plugged in 0, the first three terms disappear. All I have left is a 4. Because I plugged in 0 here, it disappears. Plug in 0 in, in that spot, it disappears, right? Because isn't that what zeros do? It makes the numbers disappear, especially if you're multiplying by them. Plug a zero there, it disappears also. So all I have left is a four. So my y-intercept is zero comma four. All right. So then the second instruction says draw a sketch of the end behavior of the graph. So you don't have to draw a dot at zero comma four. That's not what it says. Just draw me arrows. Yeah, that show opposite and right side arrow down. Okay. So here's what I'm going to do first. Whenever you do your graph you want to start putting the characteristics on your graph based on the information the degree in LC tells you. So right side arrow is down, so I'm going to uncover this box. I drew an arrow on the right side facing down. 
Then I'm going to uncover this next box because it says, which direction should I make the left side arrow? Well, if the right side was down and my degree was odd, that means I have an opposite arrow situation. So if the right side is down, my left side is going to be up because it's opposite directions, right? So you always want to do your right side arrow first and then do your left side arrow based on what the degree says to do, okay? <clears throat> All right, so let's look at letter D. Okay, so let's look for my biggest power. So power of zero, because he has no axis, so that must be power of zero. This guy's power of one. This guy's power of three. This guy's power of four. So I think I found my biggest power. My biggest power is right here, four. So we're going to call that degree. So since he is my degree, I put a four on that line. Then I classify four as an even number. So that means my arrows are same direction. Okay, so inside that circle, I'm also going to find my LC, which is positive 5. So positive 5 is my LC. So that means my LC is positive, And that means my right side arrow is facing up. Okay, all right. So Y intercept means I plug in a bunch of zeros. I plug in a zero here. It disappears. Plug in a zero here, it disappears. Plug in a zero here, it disappears. So everything disappears except for the one. So that's my coordinate for the y-intercept, zero comma one. <clears throat> okay, so next I'm gonna draw my arrows. So like I said, you always draw your right side arrow first. So my right side arrow based on the LC being positive, it says draw your right side arrow facing up. So that's what I did. I drew my right side arrow facing up. Then we're going to do the left side arrow based on what degree says. So degree says same direction. So if my right side arrow is facing up, my left side arrow should also face up as well. Okay, so you got to go in order. Always the right side, then the left side. Okay, all right, so let's look at the next problem. Okay, so now they're going to go the complete opposite direction. Yeah, last problem, they gave us the equation. Yeah, or the function, the symbolic representation. And we figured out characteristics of the graph. Okay, <clears throat> and these problems are going to give us the graph. And we're going to figure out characteristics of the function, the numbers. Okay, so I'm not going to do A or B. I'm going to do... <clears throat> Actually, which ones am I supposed to do? I guess I'll just do C and D. <laughs> I prepped this slide, but I forgot to write the word video next to the, the problems that I wanted to do on the video. So I'll just do this one. Okay, so let's look at letter C. Okay, so let's look at my, my arrows. So left side arrow is going down, right side arrow is going up. So my arrows are going same direction or opposite direction. What do we classify this situation as? Same direction for my arrows or opposite direction? And I hope you're saying in your brain, opposite direction. And if you did, then good job. Yeah, then that's all you know that your degree must be, wait, to take it off the pen mode okay then that's going to tell you that your degree is odd because it was opposite okay and then you're going to look at your right side arrow your right side arrow is going which direction it's going up and if it's going up that means your lc is positive so let's see yep right side is up so you have an lc that's positive okay so let's look at letter d both of my arrows in letter d what are they doing both of my arrows are going in the same direction. Yeah, they're going in the same direction. So if they're going in the same direction, that must mean my degree is even. Okay, and then we're gonna look at the right side arrow. We're gonna look at this arrow in particular. Oops, let me get my pen out actually. We're gonna look at the right side arrow and he's going in the downward direction. So that must mean my LC is negative. Okay. All right. So that's it for this lesson. I will see you in class and good luck on this assignment. Bye-bye.